In the heart of Norfolk, Virginia sits a downtown mall. It seems to be doing well, but is currently afflicted with a case of anchoritis and some bad press. Let's step inside and see what the MacArthur Center is all about. MacArthur Center Mall has a couple names tied to its development. In 1994, Robert Smithwick, Norfolk's Director of Development, sought to bring in upscale shopping to the Tidewater, Virginia region, and planned to build a large mall in downtown Norfolk. The mall would be named the MacArthur Center, in honor of General Douglas MacArthur, whom is entombed in Norfolk, Virginia. The project in total would come out to about $270 million. At the time, negotiations were in place to bring in Nordstrom and Macy's, two retailers who had no presence in Tidewater, Virginia at the time. Dillard's also expressed interest in the space and would sign on in 1995 to bring a location there. Although plans for Macy's were quietly withdrawn, presumably due to acquisition by Federated Department Stores, the mall would still be constructed with the city and Conroy Development financing the mall, while Taubman Centers would be tasked with building the mall. The mall would then open with Nordstrom and Dillard's on March 12, 1999. The mall did open to much fanfare and quite the crowd as it was reported that tens of thousands of people had come to the mall. Lines had formed early on before Nordstrom's opening, and there was a grand opening ceremony featuring a mock-up ship and staff dressed in old era sailor outfits. You can find an old video of this grand opening by doing a simple search. MacArthur Center seemed to have some rough patches as early as 2001, when several stores were reported to close. However, this didn't seem to be too bad of an issue going forward, as occupancy remained strong overall. In later years, Taubman Centers, whom had assumed ownership of the MacArthur Center, reported in 2008 sales that averaged around $480 per square foot. While this trend did point downwards in 2009, it was only speculated to be a minor loss. In 2009, however, would see more problems, as they enacted a teenager ban, which would ban all patrons under 18 years of age after 5 p.m., unless they were accompanied by someone 21 or older. The policy was enacted preemptively in order to prevent any incidents from breaking out among the congregating teens. This was very poorly received, and even resulted in major protests by the Culligat High School as well as threats of boycotts by parents who shopped at the mall. Despite this, the policies were enacted anyway, and there is conflicting reports on whether this policy helped the mall or hurt it. The early 2010s would bring forth store closures, primarily food court eateries. It would also bring forth a stabbing that occurred in 2013 which involved one person stabbing their friend over a dispute with a woman. Like every stabbing. The stabbing was not fatal though, and the victim would be released from hospital later on while the scene was cleaned up. Two thousand fourteen would see Taubman Centers sell the MacArthur Center, along with six other properties to Starwood Capital Group. The sale was completed in October 2014 for the low, low price of $1.4 billion. The following year, charging stations for electric vehicles would be installed, while two stores, Becky's Hallmark and Cash, would depart the mall. Fast forward to March 2018, and Starwood would be eyeing plans to expand the mall. The plan would bring mixed use to the mall, including housing developments, an upscale hotel, restaurants, and entertainment. However, while reporting on this, the Virginian pilot reported that Nordstrom's sales were dropping, 
and they dropped considerably after 2007. Their lease with the mall was on the verge of expiring, and the future of the mall could potentially depend on Nordstrom renewing or turning away from that lease. Sure enough, in 2019, Nordstrom would announce its plans to close, having decided not to renew their lease any further. The store would officially close in April 2019, me having just missed Nordstrom as I arrived on Easter weekend. Beyond my visit, however, there were more incidents that would put the mall in a bad light. Valentine's Day would see a violent shooting break out at the mall's site, while gang fights were occurring. There is conflicting reports on whether or not the shooting was related to the gang violence. In addition, October 2019 would see another shooting when two men had gotten into an argument with a third man, whom would be subsequently shot. A woman, whom was a bystander of the scene, would also be shot. The mall would then be placed under a lockdown condition. Both cases were non-lethal, and the victims would be treated for their injuries before leaving the hospital. With this string of bad press for the MacArthur Center, it appears that a dark cloud hangs over the mall and its future. We can only speculate what may happen next for the MacArthur Center, but I got a bad feeling that this mall is just going to slide downhill in the coming years. Which is a shame, because this is a Taubman Mall. The architecture is very nice in this place, like it always is with any self-respecting Taubman Mall. Whatever may happen in the future, I wish mall management and Starwood Capital the best in this mall's future. On one hand, as we walk to the second floor, there is a wall off to the side where you can take a post-it note and write a message to pay homage to our armed forces. Given that this is a temporary wall, I presume this will be up for quite a while. You know, it's a simple little thing, and probably more novelty, but still. It's an interesting way to pay a nod to those that have kept us and this country safe over the years. Overall, I do enjoy the MacArthur Center. I had plenty of time to enjoy the atmosphere MacArthur Center sets up. Taubman has always had some neat little touches in malls like these, like the statues and the jumping fountains at the base of the three elevators in the center court. As a very late 90s mall, this is definitely a wonder to behold. Whoever was the architect with Taubman Centers for this mall went berserk with the 90 and 45 degree angles present. And you even get a little taste of neon over by the movie theater. Anyway, as we begin to wrap up, I would certainly recommend a visit to this mall. Just proceed with due caution as you shop, because, you know, the undesirables. Nonetheless, I do hope you enjoyed this tour of the MacArthur Center. Next up in Tidewater, Virginia will be the Military Circle Mall right up the road. Do subscribe if you want to see that, and ring the bell if you really want to be on top of my uploads. If you want to support the ongoing mission to catalog as many malls as I can, Feel free to donate to Kofi, link down below. The simplest thing you can do though is like, comment, and share. Or dislike if you have criticisms. 
Also, I am setting up a BitChute account as a backup in case the overlords at YouTube no longer want this kind of content, so do keep that in mind as we continue. Until next time, this is Doomigrunt, wishing you and the MacArthur Center farewell and good luck.